All right, today I'm working on one of my favorite mods, uh, or one I've definitely been wanting to do for a long time. Uh, today I'm gonna add a front brake to my CT200U. Uh, if the front forks are throwing you off, it's because I put CT200U EX front forks on it. Um, so now I finally have a suspension. And the reason I'm doing the brake mod, the front brake mod, is because I picked up a parts bike which is a CT200U EX, and I've already swapped the forks off, which is a very easy <clears throat> task to do. I mean, it's pretty simple, two bolts, and move all your wires and cables and everything around. Um, the four main parts that you'll need, the OE, OEM parts that you need, uh, you're gonna need a rear wheel with the, the drum uh, assembly in it, right there. Uh, you're going to need the actual drum assembly you'll also need uh, the brake handle which you can actually get a generic brake handle you don't actually have to get the official Coleman one and then you have to get a brake cable so what else you'll need uh, go to the hardware store and you need to get a few things uh, the main way we're going to attach this to the forks is using a u-clamp this is from Home Depot uh, this is their stainless steel one um, if you get the individually non raft ones, they're very, very thin. And this one has an inner diameter that works. It's just a hair bigger than the EX forks, um, which the EX fork is about 1.428 inches, I believe, in diameter. But anyway, this is model number. Where is that? 372798, I believe. But anyway, there's the. Specs on 5 16 by 1 and half inches by 2 and 5 8 So you got that. Then, also while you're there, pick up some nylock washers. Or you can use regular washers with uh, locking washers, but I really don't particularly like those. And that's 208325. These are 5 16 18 threads per inch. Also, pick up some 14 millimeter uh, washers. The Coleman rear wheel assembly seems to be just a hair narrower than the front wheel assembly so you need to shim it on the axle just a hair with maybe one or two extra washers um, for wrapping the clamp around the fork i'm going to use uh, this is a piece of drawer mat from a toolbox just so it doesn't scuff up the paint you know i'm going to put this underneath you'll see in a little bit and then you're going to be making a bracket uh, just get a piece of angle iron. This is, let me get my calipers here to see how thick this is. Let's see, 0.155. Uh, I think it's, what is it? One eighth, yeah, a little bit over one eighth thick, I think. Uh, anyway, it's, it's pretty substantial. It, it's not gonna flex and you're going to be drilling three bolt holes and one hole for the cable to come through. And if I don't mention it later in the video, I want to go ahead and say it now. The three holes that you put for the, the two for the U-bolt and the one for the drum assembly bracket, they will not be collinear because when this nut is here, this hits something like this. So it, there's no way to get it lined up properly. So when you drill these holes, uh, again, if I don't say it later on the video, drill these as if the bracket is angled a little bit, like so, and then you'll drill the next one. Hopefully that makes sense. So this, this hole will be lower than the line between these two holes. All right, so let's get started. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to get off your wheel. That's pretty easy. Um, the nut or the bolt head size I believe is 18 millimeters and this nut over here is 19 millimeters but since it's already loose I'll take it off take it out. and what we'll do is we'll leave the axle in and you leave one washer in place to make sure that it rides against the inner race of the wheel bearings all right, so I'm gonna angle this down a little bit. Hopefully you still got a good angle. And the way I'm putting this on, I'm gonna put the drum on the same side as the rear. 
so it faces the um, oh, drum washer. So it's going to be if you're sitting on the bike, it's going to be facing the right side. Now with that kind of propped up a little bit, take your assembly. And the good thing about these EX forks is they kind of turn a little bit. And I'm gonna put this axle all the way through so I can show you this gap. There we go. All right, so here's the gap I was talking about. This is the factory washer that's left, and you can see there's one or two extra spaces here. Um, so I'm going to take this back out. I'm going to put these extra washers I got until it's there's no slack in this area. All right, I ended up using three washers here. Um, it was just a hair under what three washer thicknesses would be, so I'd rather be on... Um, I'd rather have the fork spread out just a hair than spread in. Um, when you tighten the, the nut down for the axle, don't tighten it down all the way because once you get it to its final tightness, this section won't move as easy. So leave this a little, just slightly snug so you can manipulate this a little bit. And uh, let's go ahead and get the U-bolt on here. All right, so take the U-bolt out. Now yours won't be bent when you get it, but I've already pre-assembled this. So that's why you see it all already bent. Um, uh, so what I'm gonna do, kind of get an idea where it's gonna be. You should be about right here somewhere. And you'll you'll have a little bit of movement once you tighten it down. So I place this here. And actually to get it started, you can, you can bring it around. So see how I'm putting that on there right there. All right, we'll take this piece, put it on there, and I'm just gonna put these on until they're a little bit snug. Now, as tight as I want to get these, will be dependent upon. Hopefully, you can see that. I'm gonna tighten these down until that was my bracket until they're about lined up with the, the bracket here actually so tighten these down until lay this bracket here on the flat face right here until these are just past it so in other words, like if this was on this bolt here, this would be in the middle and this would be in the same position. Now hopefully that makes sense because what we're gonna do to put this on is we're gonna put the lock nuts behind it. All right, as far as putting the bracket on, maybe go ahead and pre-drill on your bracket. Now you're gonna cut a relief right here for the bar so it goes around. Um, go ahead and drill these, at, like I said, at a slight angle so it's angled a little bit and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring this up and kind of estimate where, I well, see I'm way too high up right here. Estimate where that hole's gonna be. Yeah, it's kind of, you're guessing a little bit, but anyway, and then drill that hole and bolt these through. Now when you, to tighten the, um, this U-bolt or the bracket tip, you're gonna be using the, the uh, nylock nuts and what that's going to do is it's going to jam against these so it's actually going to make these nuts tighter and hopefully be a little bit more secure of a, a fit right here all right so i went ahead and put the line uh, nylock nuts on and uh, i've already put the bracket on and i've already started them and i've actually twisted this assembly around so it's going to be easier to get them down almost to where they're tight and then i'll spin it back around and we'll tighten it so see now you got a whole lot more room because if it was back here, you'd have only a little bit of, of movement for these. Right. 
And once it gets st snug, start doing them like a little bit at a time here to kind of even it out. That's good. And <clears throat> all right, so a little <clears throat> issue that you may have on yours. Um, once I tighten down those nuts to clamp this a good space and put this on, now with this perfectly lined up, it's actually got a little bit of a gap here, and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably take a washer out here and move it over to the other side to shift the whole wheel over um, just like a what is that an eighth of an inch so I'm gonna do that right now all right now after I get the wheel moved over it's more flat up against it so now take your bolt it's a special kind of bolt that's got a, like a longer shank on it it's got a uh, hole for a uh, cutter pin um, after you put this up here and you line it up to drill the hole, what you may want to do is actually go a little bit bigger because this actually sticks out past the bracket a little bit. So you want this kind of centered in the hole. And it's kind of hard to get it here in this little space. But what you do, make sure the head of it seats in there correctly. Then take your bolt. It goes on here. I think this is a 14 millimeter so we have a 14 millimeter wrench and tighten it down so that's nice and snug I'm gonna loosen this and clock this hole to where it's more diagonal all right moved it over or clocked it a little differently and let's see if this works any better uh, not really. Okay. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to curve this. That's how I'm going to use that hole I did to pre bend it. I need a little bit more. All right, there you go. So, bend it a little bit to get started. And take your pliers. Actually, sometimes I like side cutters better. Also known as uh, dinks. And I'll do this side as well. Now, I'll cut a little bit off here. Yeah. There's that. And then I think I'm going to cut a little bit on this side too. It probably helps if you start out with a shorter one of these first. There we go, look at that. That is not going to go anywhere. Next up, cable. All right, what you want to do uh, when you're drilling your hole, you want to drill it to the same size as this smooth area right here. And uh, also make sure um, your arm's in a good position. I'm just leaving where it's at, it's fine. And it's actually angled up a little bit, which I kind of like, so it's not angled down. Um, towards the ground um, so first thing you do take the nut off take the barrel off and you take the spring off and I think there's also a bellows that go here but on the parts bike it didn't have it so I'm gonna have to maybe get another cable later on so we'll stick that through take your barrel um, put it through here take your spring Put it here. Put this through the barrel. Make sure the barrel doesn't fall off. 
and then screw the nut back on. Now we're not adjusting it right now, I'm just gonna throw it on there because uh, we gotta adjust her, put her hand, uh, um, lever in the correct position and we'll go over that here next. All right, so that is pretty much this. And now that this is tightened down and in position, you can tighten this down to the final torque. All right, so one thing you'll notice, uh, you've already got a brake handle on the left side. Uh, this is not factory. I decided to get one with a longer throw and put on there. And so really you need it on the right side, which is, if you think about it, the right side is probably good for for front brake because your hands on the throttle and when you first want to start braking you want to use your rears first so that way you don't hit the front brakes hard and fly over so I like it better if you're going you have to brake real quick you start with the left and then you let off the throttle and you grab the the uh, right side for your front um, problem is with the kill switch uh, depending on your handlebars these are the factory EX uh, handlebars it, it it puts your brake handle in in a bend and it won't allow it to really bolt on so what you need to do is you need to take your switch and move it over to the other side um, another thing I want to mention here uh, burning rubber garage he did this same conversion on his uh, regular CT 200u with the regular uh, front end where he welded a bracket to it or welded up a bracket uh, he had to do the exact same thing on his, on the regular handlebars. So if you're trying to do this on a regular CT200U, uh, you're going to be doing the exact same thing. And uh, I'll link Burning Rubber, bleh, Burning Rubber's Garage, this video uh, in the description in case you want to see something, how somebody else does it. I'm sure if you're viewing my video, you probably already either looked at his or you're getting ready to look at his next because it'll probably be side by side when you search for this. Alright, so just unscrew the uh, I've already obviously already done it here it's just two screws uh, really just need to loosen one and then take one all the way out and then you bring it over to the other side pretty self-explanatory but I'll go ahead and do it here on camera and um, if I can get it in here everything's ten times harder on camera all right. So I usually snug the bottom one because it's a little bit harder to I think, get to. And then I'll roll this around to where it's at a comfortable position. And then actually, no, you want to tighten the top and then. I'm sorry, tighten the top all the way, well, it depends on your handlebars, but one of them will be less accessible than the other when it's in position. So tighten the least accessible, or accessible one first, and then do your final tightness on the one you have access to. All right, then boom, that's good. All right, switch over to a eight millimeter. Uh, socket and or wrench or using the impact driver here and then we'll put that right there and then this is a split cap design so we'll take this start these by hand this is aluminum you don't want to strip it or cross thread it both of these are accessible, so. Alright, let me see if that's a good position. That's alright. This one's just oh, that one's down too far, but this is this is a fine position. Alright, take your cable and right now this thing. Let me zoom out so you can see how long this is. This thing's long. It's like 60 inches long. Um, if you're not going to cut it, it's going to look like spaghetti. I'm just going to do it this way for right now. 
Uh, I'm gonna loop it through and just kind of have it, you know, this this will be zip tied. When you do zip tie, do not zip tie in an area where the bottom area of the shock's gonna ride over the um, the stationary part of the shock because it'll hit it. But anyway, take these slots, line it up, put your barrel in, and then pull, and then let it in there. If you do not have enough slack, that means you got too tight down at the drum. Let me make sure this is still a nail. Right, good. All I always do is turn this so that way they're not, the slot's not open. All right, everything's good there. This is just a big old honking mess. All right, we'll go down here and do fine tuning and adjustment. All right, what you want to do here is you want to slowly start taking this in until the wheel starts to drag and then backing off just a hair. You want to keep it freewheeling when the brakes are not applied. I can barely hear it dragging a little bit. These things, you know, these are drums, they don't... Uh, make sure your spring doesn't get trapped. I've seen this happen a few times. The spring will actually go into the barrel a little bit. Okay, you can hear that little bit of dragging. Let me barely hit the pedal to the third break. Ah, we're still good. Maybe just off center a little bit. So I'll squeeze this a little bit. Nice. We're still loose. We'll work on this. All right, just it. It barely drags a little bit. And then when you hit the brake handle, stops. Branded one, which is the exact same, except it's like a thousand freaking dollars because it's some branded one. Anyway, they, I've, I've seen some pictures and not all of them come this way or maybe a hand few of them. They actually have a front brake on theirs and it's the same thing, it's a drum brake, but they actually have the same style bracket that's in the rear welded to the fork on the back side. And I think why the reason why they had the drum on the left side and the bracket back here is because when you're breaking, all the force is pushing against the frame, so you're not really worrying about the tension of the weld. So if you have a regular CT200U um, and you're good with welding, there shouldn't be a problem. You could actually weld the same style bracket that you see down there. You know, it's kind of like an angle iron piece. Um, <clears throat> the only reason I don't want to, you know, I'm, I'm decent in welding. I mean, I can make do, but these are, you know, oil filled shocks and you don't want, really want to apply heat to essentially a pressure cylinder uh, like this. And this one, this method is just, it's really super easy. You can do it in the afternoon. You know, it may cost you I don't know how much these parts are all together. 100 bucks, maybe for the parts. Um, the whole parts box I got for the forks and everything was $100. So to me, that was a steal. And plus, I need new tires. I need to swap these out to the front style tire where the grooves are more uh, uh, in line with the rotation. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, I think I went over everything. Um, Oh, one more note. Uh, I'll probably put this in, in a little thing as I say it before. Those washers are actually, the axle size is 15 millimeter. I was mistaken when I said 14 millimeter. So uh, I actually got 14 millimeter washers and as soon as I put it on there, I was like, wait a minute, these don't fit. It fits over the threaded area. It doesn't fit over the, 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 the solid area. Um, so I just put those in the drill press and used the step drill and held the washers flat in a vise and just slowly applied pressure and wallered it out to where it was 15 millimeters. Um, they slid on fine. Um, I guess that's it guys. Uh, next video I will make uh, after I perfect the uh, method of doing so is 
I will show how to shorten the brake cable so you don't have, you know, this jumbled mess here. Um, pretty much this connection here I haven't seen on other brake cables. So you pretty much have to buy a Coleman one unless you do some uh, fabricating down in this area. And in my next video I'm going to show how to cut this end off, this little barrel end, and pretty much solder a new end on it. If I have my piece with me, which I do, I'll get it right here. Here's one. This is I took an old scrap bicycle, and this is one I made. And I put this in the vise and I wrapped a screwdriver around the end here, and I yanked on it, and it will not come out. So I think I'm getting to the point where these are strong enough for me to trust. Luckily, it's front brake, so you know I still got the rear, and that's the beauty of having two brakes on this thing is if one brake cable snaps you know you still at least got a backup brake so if you enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up uh hit the subscribe button and hit the alert so whenever i post that next video on how to uh, shorten the cable you'll get the alert on it and thanks for watching and hopefully i'll make some more modification videos thank you